Are you ready, Alex? <laughs> I'm ready. I love the height. And I'm nine feet tall. I love the height. Hey, don't fall on that kid. Yeah, don't fall moving around. You're gonna be like trying to go I'm going to try not go there. super high on idea. you. I'll, I'll stay high that? at the end of the round. <laughs> you want me to hold your legs? You want to you wanna hold the ladder? I might creep up on you. Creep up. Creep up. <laughs> I'll know after the first pass if I'm like, oh, this is a bad <laughs> idea. All right, take it off. Right to left. This is the in runner version. This is a maiden on it. This is the new high performance one because it's got that F 35 in runner. Full oh, power. Is Twelve. Yeah, it's all, I think they're all twelve. Maybe eleven. Sounds good. But man. I think it's twelve. Power off. These clouds are awful for orientation on a red jet. <laughs> Absolutely awful. Pour it off. Back across the runway, left to right. Oh, shit. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, keep flying, keep flying, keep flying. Oh, my keep God. Keep flying. Dude. Oh, <laughs> went behind. Oh, please, you saved that. He went behind <laughs> the What? The Oh, my God. It was in the trees. It was in the trees. Oh, another signal issue. Signal issue. I'm landing hot, but uh, I'm gonna. You feel like I can. If not, then no. Well, that's a first flight back. Hello pilots, welcome back to Motion RC Live on this Friday, June 19th, and uh, we have a fun video. What you just saw happened a couple weeks back, um, it almost made the crash. I was going to submit it if it was a crash, but might be one of the most epic saves I've ever had. Um, I just got a little signal loss coming out of, the, out of my uh, dive there during the dive. Had no signal, and then when it snaps, I don't know if Alex, if you have the uh, slow-mo yeah. version of it, but when it snaps is obviously when I get signal back and I just got lucky and putting it together, there was a, um, Alex was on a ladder trying to get just a different angle. So when he goes, I, I, I was on his right. So when I look, I had lost view of the plane long before it actually went behind the, the, uh, the stalls there where we, um, you know, where everybody at our field gets their planes ready. So I just got insanely lucky and uh, unbelievable that i managed to save it and then turns out we we're just finding i guess my transmitter uh just yesterday we went out to the field with patrick and we were going to do some tandem ov10s and i started getting signal loss and then i ended up sitting there for about two hours yesterday testing different receivers and everything and range checking and it turns out that my transmitter has an issue so that was the start of the issue and some some planes it was working with but then others it's not so always range check your stuff um, I don't think I did a range check on that one uh, that day. I probably would have saw it there, but 
man, that was close and unbelievable <laughs> that I saved it. She still looks good, and we will eventually get back out once I get my transmitter uh, fixed up. So today, as you see in the top of the corner with, again, third week unveiling our ESPN-esque sidebar here, uh, this is a Crash Contest finalist. So the video we're going to play is going to be 30. We've narrowed it down to 30 finalists. It was hard. It was hard. It was hard to go through. There were some we wanted. There were some repeat uh, people. Again, it didn't matter if you submitted 20 crashes and they were the 20 best, you'd get 20 entries in there. This was a different type of contest. But, um, you know, we just thought they were the 20 best overall, you know, crashes. Uh, some crashes might have been better, but the way they were filmed, tough to see, things like that. You know how it goes. So we did our best to, uh, you know, pick out this 30. We're going to play this video. And I just want to let you know, we are going to make this video that you're going to watch. It's going to be a separate video that will go live at 1 o'clock. So in 58 minutes, the, the video you guys are about to watch now live will go live. And in the comment section of that video is where you're going to choose. So every video you're about to see has a number, the person's name, and where their submittal came from, whether it was Hobby Squawk or Facebook uh, or Custom Community. And then uh, on that video, all you have to do is say you like number five is the best. You just have to write number five. So we expect that video to mostly, hopefully, be full of comments like that. And we're going to leave that up for a week. And to about 9 a.m. next Friday morning is when we'll count, tally up. I'll, I'll make that video, the comment section, private at 9 a.m. on that video next week. And, um, you know, we'll count up the votes. And this time next week, we will award our grand prize winner, a Skynetic Air Titan. And then remember, we will choose a runner-up. So the runner-up might not necessarily come from this uh, one of these 30 finalists. There are tons of other awesome submittals too. It was tough, as we said, to narrow it down. But we'll award that person a Skynetic Mercury V2 and then a random draw for everyone who submitted a video for this contest. Uh, we'll get a $50 gift card and we'll announce all those winners next Friday. And before we get into it too, next Friday, since we did get out yesterday with Patrick, we're going to do, next Friday will be Learn to Land Part 3 with a tail dragger. So Patrick brought out his Corsair uh, yesterday with us, and he did basically the same thing he did a few weeks ago with the F-22 in a jet, and uh, he was showing us how to land, and um, that'll be fun too. So we'll do that all next Friday. But I think, uh, ready? let's roll it. Let's start the Crash Finalists. So the first one was from M Shag on Hobby Squad with this awesome 3D printed aircraft. And they've got sound, right? Yeah. yeah. Boom! And in a bunch of pieces. Very soft. <laughs> it looked like it would have been a soft landing. If that was foam, it wouldn't look like that. But that's glued together 3D printed piece. Hobby Squawk member Victor Shamulus, the snake. Number two. Oh, God, dude. That's always rough. Uh, always rough to see. Number three, Hobby Squawk member Alpha 10. Ooh, it is Goshawk just coming in hot. I don't know what happened there, but look good. Hey, Ricardo, I see you in the comments. Keep watching. Brown 64, Hobby Squawk member. That one was, they caught that like they turned on the camera late. Number five is Mike Keller. I love this guy's sound. <laughs> so I will be quiet. Oh, wow. Ooh. Death. Oh, Death. killed it. Death. This old girl, she saw her last day. <laughs> Rough. Number six from Hobby Squawk, Skip Met. Oh, oh. Watch it, Marty, watch it, Marty, watch it, Marty. There's a gyrocopter coming down there. Oh, <laughs> yeah, hey, that one was I crazy. did I just say it was only a matter of time? Nothing you can do about that. Another one from the snake at number seven. I love the way. It's the diamond jet, yeah. <laughs> Some onboard camera is always nice. It clips the top of that fence. Oh! Oh, she's gone. <laughs> oh that like nose. A shark bite. <laughs> that nose is gone. Number eight, girl one guy, 1972 this from Hobby Squad. Yeah. Lower. This one had to be in it. They've got effects and then a three-way crash. And one got away. Wonder if he landed that one. I assume he did. Jeremy Salt, 4923 crew, Hobby Squad, number eight, nine. 
Oh, 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 trying to do inverted under a table. Because why not? Yeah. Hobby Squawk, Ric Ricardo PR 54. Yeah, great cartwheel here. Oh, oh man. man. What kind of plane was that? I can't see. Um, but we'll can't close. Remember. Ooh. Is that Ricardo in the comments? Yeah, that's Ricardo. So there, there you go, go. number 10, buddy. You're in there. And we didn't do any editing to these videos, so some are just longer than others by yeah, what was submitted. As is, if you, sh if you kept in the slow-mo, I tried to show it. Yeah. Number 11, Bra Papa D. Hobby Squawk Man, but obviously Avant. <laughs> Look how strong that fuselage is. Look at the strength from Free Wing. Again, we could have had just a cartwheel contest. <laughs> Says that was a T33. Oof. Number 12, Rocky 9 from Hobby Squawk. <laughs> oh, this is the Venom, right? I think yeah. it's a Venom. Yep. <laughs> oh, man. man. Oh. Ooh. Came in hot. So Number 13, hot. Tank Guy from Hobby Squawk. Great hand launch here. Look at him, gets that nice. Oh, perfect angle. He flicked his wrist like a basketball shot. The just angle of release was <laughs> threw it at the ground. <laughs> oh, what the did hands I do? Off the international symbol of oh no. <laughs> and there. another one from Vic. You got oh. three in this. This one is awesome too. Got Always got the camera running. It pays. It oh. might pay. Depends oh. on if they vote oh. for you. Bang! Number 15. I can't pronounce that. There it's you are. Radical RC. Radical RC. Oh, yes, Wild Bill, you should get on spot. Oh, this one's awesome. Yeah, that's awesome. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> that magnetism. Number 16, Godster a, 2K. So many good ones. <laughs> oh, this is the A10. Yep. Looking good. <laughs> oh. 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 And again, the strength. I think that was a 70, I think that was an FMS one. I'm not sure. Mooch, number Mooch. 17. Oh, the Tundra. <laughs> oh, the tund Tundra. Literally uh, self destruct. Uh, 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 Unbelievable. Number 18, Jigs from Hobby Squawk. Oh, Jigs. I love Jigs' comment at the end of this one. This one comes like right back yeah, out. Yeah, right back out. <laughs> <laughs> and destroyed, I destroyed it. it. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, you did. Oxotic, Oxotnik. Number 19. Oh, oh the B26. Oh. oh, and it was Balsa, too. Oh, they always crash oh. the best. <laughs> yep. Uh. Miller RC, number 20. Oh, yeah. I think he loses an elevator linkage. <laughs> <laughs> Farmer man, we'll get to that. We'll sh 21, Chris Rybert. This was the only heli one we got. It's a middle. And oh, they always sound good when they go in. <laughs> now we're at number 22. Hobby Squawk again. Percy Flyer 50. This is like 1996. Yeah. It's amazing the 90s look so old. Yeah. Watch it, something falls off right there. Oh, no. Damn. Oh. I, I didn't have anything at Amazing all. they digitized that After footage. Fantastic. <laughs> 23 Hobby Squawk member Frank GR. Oh, oh man, this is tail heavy, too much wind. We saw a couple of these we've seen. Now from F Facebook customer community, Anthony Leto, number oh, this 24. One's, this one's epic. Oh. Oh, 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 is that a 22? Yeah. yeah, yeah oh man. Ooh. Oh man. Oh. What a shot. Oh, 
and this is him doing the editing, so that's why we showed it. So we didn't slow these down. Twenty-five. Good luck. M D U spin. Is that an SG-35? I think so, yep. And that's a light pole. What? Wait, but young. Oh! <laughs> Who put that there? Motion RC Customer Community 26, Dave Christie. Oh, this is the DO in the... Oh! Oh, no! No! Oh, no! <laughs> that a Mustang is hitting, I think? Yeah. Oh, man. Wow. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Todd, you know about light poles. Todd Brett is in the comment. He flies at a at a school parking lot. His F-22 met a light pole at one point, I believe. Customer community, Rupert Hauser. It looks like a skateboard move. Yeah. It looks like it's going to get back on and keep flying. The wing just separates and comes from underneath. Boom. And flies away. Unbelievable. Hobby Squawk member, Kirkhan28. Yeah, we like this one. They just meet up together and they meet their and demise. The carnage when it hits, it's not like it lands <laughs> softly there. 29, Wiegman from Hobby Squawk. The way he runs away there. He gets me every time. Get out of Dodge. <laughs> Plane was like, I didn't like that hand launch. We're coming again. And lastly, number 30, Wubar Master. Another onboard oh. hit and I love when onboard footage pays off like that. Demise. So there you have it, guys. Those are our 30 crashes from all of our uh, submittals. So we want to thank everybody for your submissions. Again, next week um, we'll show some of the other submissions too. We plan on. I think Alex yeah, is going to put together, together a big of everybody's. Everything yeah, every, that could fit in like yeah. five six minutes. We're going to add it to music and make a nice crash compilation at some point um, afterwards. But again. Just because you didn't make the finals does not mean you can't be a runner-up, uh, win the runner-up prize. That's going to be chosen by us here at Motion RC, um, and then the random draw could be anyone uh, to win that. So there you have it, guys. That's 30 pretty awesome crashes. I want to thank everybody who submitted. It's a long-running contest. We gave people plenty of time to uh, you know, get their submissions in, and then once this wraps up next week, we're going to be thinking about whatever the next contest is, because I've spoken with Alpha, and he has some ideas, and... Uh, you know, we'll definitely, contests are fun, and it's fun to come up with different ways to engage with the community, and, you know, crashes are the type of thing that just happens. So, now we are on the crash contest. What do we got there? On Facebook. Let's oh, run over to the community, I guess. Yeah. Facebook community will be next. There we go. And let's take a tour. Can we start with, is this where we have the phony? Yeah, bought it from, let's yeah. start with Mike Seth. So Mike, Seth, guys, if you've seen them out there, I wanted to call attention to. There are those knockoff cheap, uh, knockoff videos that show like our F-14 Tomcat, uh, the F-22, and we're doing our best to try to get these removed. We don't know where they come from, though. It's tough. But this guy decided, Mike, Seth, to, to put his money down. I wouldn't have given my credit card to one of these companies, but it turns out you just get... One of these metal models, if you've ever seen them. Actually, I have two. I have a Spitfire and a Corsair one from a real. This is like even a knockoff one of the Metal Masters ones, I believe they're called. But uh, he put his money in, 20 bucks, I guess, and that's what he ended up receiving. So just trying to get people to know, if you see anything that looks too good to be true, do not believe it. That is 100% fake news coming through. Uh, you know, I see it on Facebook and I see them on YouTube, so... You know, it's all you can do is report them, and hopefully enough people can report them for us. But uh, it's really tough to try to knock these down. They steal our footage. They steal all companies' footage, independent reviewers' footage. They take it all. They, real footage. I mean, I think I've seen in the Tomcat video just a real Tomcat flying by. And, they, you know, like, I don't know who can fall for this or who thinks they're going to get what would be a $500 plane for 20 bucks. But they're obviously a few of us out there but uh good on mike for at least doing that 
Then we'll move on. What's what's his name again? Is this Don? No, not Don Adams. This Tim is Gatlin. Tim, Gatlin. Tim Gatlin. So this past weekend was the EDF Jet Jam. And again, I wish I could have made it. We wish we could. But with COVID and everything, it's just a little too soon to get out there for us. But uh, Tim Gatlin ended up taking home the best EDF foamy jet at the event with his Iron Maiden scheme day L37. I believe the Iron Maiden, I don't know if he submitted it into the March Madness contest, but we had seen it pop up on Facebook when he did it a while back and it looks awesome and I'm shocked that that ended up being, you know, I guess the win. I mean, I guess I'm not shocked. It's a gorgeous, <laughs> it's a gorgeous yeah, scheme, great. but you know, I've, I've been to EDF Jet Jam and there's always some fantastic stuff there. So Tim, thank you for sharing that on Facebook with us and uh, congratulations on taking home a plaque for your RC model. Next we have Tyler Blanchett. He customized a T-33 in what looks to be, what is it, the C-Star? It's a C-Star scheme, a T-Y. It looks like a T-28, like you'd see in those T-28 schemes. Nice trainer scheme, but I really dig that. Thank you so much for sharing. I mean, we pretty much see it all, guys, and, you know, we can't get enough. And now the T-33, so you know that USAF version is back in stock in both warehouses, I believe. So if you want to jump on a T-33, a fantastic flyer. And overall, just a, uh, you know, awesome, 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 awesome flyer. And now, if you remember last week, this one, Don Adams coming up. Poor Don. We shared last week in this same segment, we shared his custom F-35C. He added flaps to his F-35, and uh, he had a crash with it. Unfortunately, that was a picture, but he does have a video he shared of it flying around for a bit. And, uh, you know, it looked like it flew great. I think he got... I think he takes off a little quicker than it would have been, but uh, sad to see all that work go down, and then to not had you know had our submission period for the crash contest not uh, not uh, ended before this popped up on Facebook. He probably could have submitted it, but I don't think he gets video of the actual crash, so we won't show this whole thing. But it did fly around a little bit. Uh, Farmer man, did I see your L39? I mean, we see them all uh at some point but uh yeah man i'm sure I, i'm sure i saw it but i gotta watch more again there's so much there's so much content out there now that it's you spend all day watching content at this point you sort of pick and choose your battles and you know how much time you can get in but yeah right todd that t33 did look sharp and the f35c i wonder if he'll give it another shot with the flaps i don't think it necessarily needs flaps if you slow it down the right way but, you know, for a 70 millimeter jet, it was cool that he even did it and attempted it. So good on you for that. And thank you so much for uh, sharing. So let's move on to Hobby Squawks because we have some cool um, things to show on the community. Again, Hobby Squawk growing by leaps and bounds, guys. We are getting tons of people joining and more people sharing. Now that the tank threads are there, now that we've got car people coming in because we got cars, um, you know, our helicopters, our boat section. Uh, it's just a growing community, and we do our best to moderate it. Todd Breda is our lead moderator. He works for Motion here. He does graphics, website stuff. Todd's always around, but he's all over it. And we start with, if you remember last week, I shared some cool tank battlefield footage, and then that guy ended up coming back. What was his name again? His first one's from well, actually, the first. Curious. Okay, so this is B Curious R. He responded with, his in Colorado, look at this battlefield for tanks that they have at a field. So this guy was just responding to the guy from last week who shared some awesome video, but I love the scale detail in those buildings. I mean, this is what I need. I think I need my club to start building. We need a, <laughs> we need an area for this because it looks fantastic and with the right camera like angles. That shot right there, like that's awesome. That looks unbelievable. That's the awesome. bridge and everything. I mean, I would kill to be able to drive a tank around in there. FPV as well. But go to um, Ranger Ranger L Lungen because this was last week the guy posted and I had asked him on Hobby Squawk, hey, if you have a wide shot of what the entirety of that battlefield looked like and. Based on the pictures he shared last week, you couldn't even tell that it was within a show and event. Like, you couldn't see anything behind. But, again, just the detailing that goes on that people put into these tank, uh, you know, tank models. Like, just scale buildings and stuff. I love it. I can't wait to get to one. I gotta find one. I wish there was one around here um, that I could go to. But, when in doubt, if you build it, they will come. So, I'm gonna have to find someone to build an awesome, awesome tank battle. 
Then I found this one on Hobby Squawk, so a custom plane. Not ours, but awesome. The V-22. I believe it was a Blitzworks one. But uh, he put, like, the white tiger stripes on it. And uh, this is you. You, Weedman. He does a lot of cool customizing work. But that just looks mean. That looks absolutely mean. I never flew one of these, the Ospreys. Um, you know, I heard people say different things about them. But, you know, it looks like it would be fun, you know, if you get it. But it looks really cool in that scheme. And I dig you. He always shares some great stuff. So, um, fantastic. Thank you for that. And then let's head over to our good friend Steve Hodges. So, a while back, he had posted a 3D printed um, submarine that he's working on. It's a, a lay, well, I would say redoubtable, but it's redoutable, I believe, is the way you're supposed to say it. <laughs> it was a World War I, like the, the original was like a, um, you know, even earlier times, like warship, um, like you know mayflower type of warship but then i guess with submarines they had a submarine that they named and he did it 3d printed bought himself a kiddie pool to put in his basement to test to test its cg and things like that and now he's in the process of making another one with a pvc pipe as the basis this guy is absolutely insane and if you saw he was actually on the merry boozers channel i think a while back he showed off his uh nautilus submarine he really took to the submarines and this guy i mean Whatever he touches, he scales out like crazy. And if you want to go check out the threads of, um, of Steve, he's been updating all these build threads in the 3D printed section or the submarine section of uh, Hobby Squawk. And then he took that first 3D printed one out for a test in the lake. And just awesome, awesome work. Um, you know, just all the, I couldn't even imagine the process of 3D printing something and then submerging it and making sure water doesn't Steve come in. Like, so hard. It's impressive. Steve goes absolutely, absolutely hard. And we can't thank him enough for, you know, not only taking the time to do it, but then to share it with everybody so that other people can see it and hopefully get inspired. Because I'm hoping some Bancroft submarines eventually hit the, uh, you know, hit the website at some point once our boats come out, which would be next month. It's looking like Bancroft is finally going to arrive, and we'll start seeing some boats as well. Now, anything else on Squawk, or that was the end of... I think that's it for Squawk, guys. So, you see it come back to me, I guess. There we go. And now we will take a quick tour around the Instagram. Guys, if you follow us on Instagram... Um, you know, obviously we thank you. It's a growing thing. I, I like Instagram because it's really just all pictures and, you know, like Facebook or whatnot. If you just like the things you like, you'll only see the things you need to see uh, in that way. But I love I love perusing Instagram sometimes because you just see cool pictures and videos and such. So first one that popped up was Inertia. He was out with a yak and his uh, L39. Thought that was awesome. Um, Inertia RC, I see him post a ton. He's always someone a good follow there on Instagram. Then we had Opterix. He got himself an F-14. I saw and I a think, lot of that talk after Jet Champs. Yeah. I like I saw four of them and I had to have it now. Well, I think Andrew Williams, Gib, uh, we had filmed his F-14 there a few years back. He was probably there flying around his F-14. I know Dave Kowiski ended up grabbing an OV-10 and an F-14 at the same time. He posted that box. Ocean RC, customer of the week. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> That's what we need. Your customer of the week. Share what you got. And then the next one, check this out. So this is, what's his name again? T-Cat. T-Cat. T -Cat. He did a Starscream F-22, but then he added a decal of Iron Man hanging under the F-22, which was a nod to the first Iron Man movie with Robert Downey Jr., um, where he's hanging on an F-22 uh, to try to hide from the F-22's radar. And uh, really cool. I like that he did that. I remember Jeremy Salt actually hung a figure off the bottom of his F-22 when it first came out which was really funny. But um, yeah, oh, there's Dave. He says, because Andrew was there, that's why he ordered one. Yeah, when I was there a couple years back, yep, Andrew filmed that. It was the first fan flight we ever did uh, at the Jet Jam. We said, hey, he was actually leaving. I'm like, can you, can you, before you leave, can you just fly to Tomcat one more time for us? And he did. And uh, that gave birth to about a year or so where we were sharing fan flight videos. We no longer do that just because you know, we try to share it any other way. If you have a video that you want us to spread through Motion RC of one of our products, we'll happily share it through our social channels, but we won't upload it to our channel. I thought it was a good way to get people to your channel, but, uh, you know, maybe one day we could get back to it. But either way, 
It was fun, and thank you so much, guys, for sharing things. Always hit the hashtag, MotionRC, Freewing makes us see it, or at MotionRC, then I'll definitely see it. You know, me, Alex, Alpha, we all go on there. And Alpha.makes, again, if you want to see cool stuff from Alpha himself, that's the only social channel that he goes on personally, other than Hobby Squawk. Um, so you could talk to Alpha there as well. Which is fun. So guys, uh, that moves on to next in the list. So last week you saw I had the next of Tiger Moth on the table in a bunch of pieces. And now I have it uh, pretty much complete. So I wanted to take you around it. You also saw I, I had unboxed the KV-1. This video is coming out. Um, I'll move him out of the way though. Love the KV-1. We were driving him around. We got that video coming in a little bit. But we'll get to this side. So... The Tiger Moth, what did I end up doing? So after Friday, I left everything on the table, you know, through the weekend. Came in Monday, and I started building it. And by Monday night, I pretty much had it I pretty much had it done. Then Tuesday, I just did some, some minor things. But it took me about, you know, on the course of about, I don't know, I'd say about six good hours of working on it. And, you know, just taking your time with this. First time I've ever built a Nexa model. And then the first time I ever built a biplane. So some things, again... Go through but i'm using the recommended setup so i got the gp5 770 kv motor on the front this is the motor mounts as it comes out of the box and then i so now to hit cg because we noticed in squawk people were saying um you know with this model because this model's been around for a while so a lot of people you know have said certain power systems you're going to have to do things for the cg so i had to build myself a little shelf and i could show you inside well, one thing I did, first off, they, they give you two uh, plastic screws that you're supposed to cut through and then, you know, put the canopy through the canopy. But I actually just added a magnet. One little magnet on the back here. I just glued a little shelf of wood, like a paint stick, and then put one magnet back there. And it gives me more than enough hold. If you see right, I'm looking at the camera, right there is the magnet. But uh, I just glued that little piece of wood behind it. And it works like a charm, so I don't have to you know, sit there and twist screws. But that was one little thing. And then when you get inside of it, you could see, so I ended up making a shelf for my battery and cutting a hole through the, through the uh, firewall uh, to fit a 5000 4S perfectly. And the shelf is six paint sticks thick. I just cut four inch, four inch pieces on there and uh, it, it turned out to work perfectly. Let me put a battery in. And this was to try to get that CG as far forward on an electric system as possible. I even got a free wing strap, but you can see she fits right through, right up to the front. So what I'm going to do is, because then I noticed that, I'll show you, I'll put the, I'll put the cowl on and everything, and I'll show you uh, my CG. And then I just actually, on Amazon, picked up 12 of these for, I think it was like 8 bucks. They give you, I'm sorry, 24, 20, well, 12 ounces of 24 half ounce lead uh, weights that you use for like a tire or something to balance tires. But they're just adhesive weights and they're all half ounces. So I needed just a tad more weight, I feel, because I'm, I'm pretty much right there. But I would just need a little more weight to uh, hit that CG. And guys, anyone getting into balsa uh, ARFs, these are the type of things that you always, you know, have to do. You're going to... You're going to manipulate things in different ways because a lot of these models were made, uh, you know, I think when this model was probably originally designed, there was no such thing as an electric power system, maybe, or things like that, you know? So when you're getting, when you're updating the technology on things, then, you know, you're going to have to make little manipulations, but it's fun. It's fun, like, you know, figuring things out and making it work. But here we go. I'm going to unstrap from here and don't lose my strap just want to get the battery strapped in nicely so let's put it back in there and actually I had it really tight and then Alpha said you know you got to watch out for puffing you know your pack will puff a little bit during the flight so I opened up the hole just a little more so it, it you know it definitely has some movement and it can breathe and I put a piece of foam up against the the motor side of it so that uh, you know the battery doesn't hit anything. It's away from any screws. Like there's no way once it's strapped in, there's like nowhere that it can go, which works. So let's put that down. Let's put our canopy back on. And based on 
where I measured, you know, the canopy like just fits, which is which is awesome. I gotta get it in. There we go. There we go. So canopy's on. Now let's get the cowl on. So the cowl again. These are all things you're gonna be fitting on. This is four screws time to do it but I hope to uh, test the CG today right here while I'm there see if we can hit that CG mark and then I'll, I'll never have to take this off again I hope let's line that up and I just use a piece of tape I didn't use my magnetic tray but you got to put everything on it if you're gonna properly CG it so every little screw everything prop on it make sure everything is as is then you got to take it all off again because I'm gonna, what I think I'm gonna do is, since these are adhesives, I'm probably gonna adhesive them to the, uh, to the fuselage side. So I'm gonna put a piece of tape on top here, I think, and just start laying, you know, half ounce at a time and see if we could hit it right, you know? Well, RC Air Marshal, it's not about the battery puffing, but batteries breathe as they're, as they're working that's what alpha was saying you know it's not that the batteries are bad or anything but the battery breeze you don't want to you know up against the wall i don't want to have the battery so tight where it doesn't have room because the batteries do expand and you know contract even small so so you just don't want to you know you don't want to mess that up that's what i meant by that and that's what alpha means by that you know that's why like velcroing a pack or the straps like you know, they all can expand and contract. You wouldn't make a house, you wouldn't house a battery in a compartment that's so tight where there's no room to breathe, is what he what he goes by. I like the puffy stuff. Jeff in, in Lower Alabama. Where in Lower Alabama, Jeff? What does that mean? <laughs> How low in Alabama? Is there a Jeff from lowest Alabama? <laughs> Jeff from high Alabama. <laughs> You don't have a hobby spot around this thing? Shamulus. Uh, no, we do. It's the British. Everything's happening in the, the British camo uh, hobby squawk thread. Um, trying to call you out. No, there's a hobby squawk. <laughs> I'm in. I just go into the right. Rather than start a whole second thread, so then it gets confusing. We try to keep everything in one thread. So I know, like, Pop is working on that. He did the, T, the, the P47 thread. So if somebody else ever wants to do build thread, just go to that thread and just pick up where that one left off you know we try to have like one official thread per aircraft just makes it easier for people to search you know if there are 50 threads for the same plane you'll never find the information and actually while i'm talking about that speaking of for anybody who's uh we had put up a poll at mark um put up a poll asking people you know Things they need to know about Hobby Squawk, me and Alex here in the next week or so, we're going to get started on a video series of how to use Hobby Squawk properly, how to do certain things on it, and we're also going to do it for MotionRC.com, which will work for EU. You know, show people how to navigate both websites a lot easier. So, um, you know, that. Who said, William Decker, I'm glad I got the camo version. Sorry, James. I wanted the camo version, but that one went out so fast. Um, but I don't mind the silver. I dig the silver. But yeah, I think the camo one is the camo one's definitely hot. All right, so I'm just putting the prop on here, very lightly. All right. So now I have my CG marked. So by the book, I believe if I'm remembering correctly, it's 106 to 112 millimeters uh, back from the leading edge of the top wing. So I was trying to search around to see if maybe uh, you know. Maybe that CG is wrong. Who knows? Uh, at this point, I haven't found anything. But for the most part, people say that that CG is correct. So here I am with everything in there. And it's just sitting tail. Like, it's not going to leave my fingertips. But it's just a tad tail heavy for my comfort. You know, it's like if I could move my fingers back another half, another like half inch, I'm pretty much right where I want to be. But obviously, I don't want to do that. I'd rather just put... A little extra weight so my thought process is and you guys can tell me if I'm gonna be doing this wrong oh they will oh, oh they will <laughs> oh they will but just to test out my weight theory I was gonna do well let me do a bigger piece of tape well so the tape is the tape gonna mess me up is it gonna be too much weight nah, 
I think I'll be alright. Because <laughs> I don't want to be pressed. So I was going to put, so I'm going to add the weights right where the firewall starts. So I was just going to put this up here, tape, and let's start taping a half ounce on each oh, way. That's a good pro tip I just read from Pro Tip Gogin Yi. What is it? Try a solid metal prop nut to help with the CG since it's as far forward as possible. You got an extra one of those laying around? Here? No, I don't have a solid <laughs> extra. That is a good call. That's See, a I good tip. That's, I that's like thinking. the idea of that because um, you know, at least it's useful, right? Like yeah. you don't want to add unnecessary weight. You might as well make it useful. But I'm actually not gonna lie. The ESC I have in here right now, the I only had a 60 amp ESC on me. It's not the one I'm gonna go with. So I'm gonna have to do this again. I just want to see if we could hit CG here. But I'm getting that. I'm I'm actually uh, the only one we had available was like a Castle Creations 85 amp. So I'm sending myself that, which is probably too much amperage. But I was thinking in my head, it's a bigger ESC that it might do it on its own if I mount it underneath uh, that that plate that I put in here anyway. So. I may not even need these weights, but just for the show here today, I thought, let's give this a shot. So I'm just going to lay that's a half ounce. So let's get back to so our seat. Frank's yelling already, put the weight in front of the hood. So, but see, my thought process is, do I want the extra weight on the motor mount where the motor is? Frank. You know, <laughs> I mean, I guess I should. I, I was thinking that I should just glue the weight to the back of the motor mount or the front of the motor mount, but I just thought, do I need... Is it too much weight on the front? Pull the people real quick. Throw it out there. Pull the people. Which way should I go? Papa? As far as you can mount the weight, the less you will need. Exactly. So you're right. Alex even said it Science. to me. Science. Science. So I'm going to go right. Let's go right out here. Science, Mr. White. <laughs> <laughs> so let's put that out there because that's about as far as I get these. Now, am I going to not? Hold on. Let me move this plane before I knock it off the table and destroy the OB-10. Let's go. One under here. I have it marked. Still looking a little tail. I don't want to have to add too much. But let's go. They give us strips upon strips upon strips. So I'm going to put... That's two, so that's one ounce. Starting to look a little better. Starting to feel a little better. Let's go with three, an ounce and a half. Stick, stick, oh, stack. Let's just stack them. Stay there. Don't fall off on me. starting to feel better. I don't know if it's ever going to sit perfectly flat. Let's see, we got some comments here from e Powered RC says, mounted to the motor mat will be fine. Or just put a bigger motor on it. That's adding dead weight to electric planes. Yeah, yeah I hear you, but wanted to go with the recommended setup. I could. Gary, Gary Webb says a few ounces won't bother a plane of that size. Uh, see, DN like Scoot says weighted prop nut would probably correct it. A weighted prop nut would probably look good too. Yeah. Where do you get weighted prop nuts? Guys, where do we get weighted prop nuts? Yep. Yeah. Share a link. <laughs> I don't know if they can. That's two ounces. I wish I had a proper CG. Even if I had a CG machine, I don't think I'd be able to go yeah, through the, with the uh, wires. The bottom. All right, I'm gonna go straight to three ounces. Let's see what happens. Whoa. All right, two and a half. Two and a half. Watch, I need all 12 ounces. No. no. Oh, and then I lost oh, it. They're not balancing. Go. They're not balancing. I don't want to waste the adhesive on them. But I guess it doesn't matter. Yeah, let me. You got 24 of them. Let me slot that over. Well, I could use them for. I was thinking, use them for everything, you know? Let's see, stay there. Stay there. Isn't this fun, guys? CG and aircraft? I'm feeling good there. It looks good. What do you guys think? What do you think? It's CG. You know, with a biplane, it's, you know. 
I've seen one fly. A guy at my field has a different version of the same plane. He went with a big 6S setup. And a third, Lewis Sharp. I saw him out at the field the other day. And yeah, the motor he has, he says, the size of his fist. So he doesn't need to, uh... He's like, I didn't need to do anything. Ah, Frederick Chaplin says, I feel like you would need to add and subtract weights depending upon the wind. Anyways, that's just me. Josh Flyboy says, now fly, send it. Send it! <laughs> there we go. I think three ounces. That's what I was kind of expecting. Because I did, when, before I moved that, put that battery in, when I hit, the, when you go to CG mark, I mean, it's all tail. Yeah. Brent you know? says, because of the short nose of these World War One planes, you need a lot of extra weight. A lot of extra one. So let's try, let's see what happens with. Oh. Oh. Ah. Balance, balance. That's three and a half. Let's go right to four. Let's see what happens at four. Come on! <laughs> Too much coffee today. Gary Webb says, I like a small nose down attitude to begin with. I'm assuming with yep. these types of planes. Ninja 44 really wants to know when a new EDF jet is going to be released. Oh, you're going to have to wait, Ninja. Ninja. <laughs> There's always something on the way, buddy, but we just... Sometime this year. This just I'll, came. I'll spoil it. <laughs> spoil it. This year. Yes. There'll be more this year. This year is far from over. We didn't even hit summer yet. Two days. There we go. That's four ounces. Man. Man. And then I saw another guy said, like, I, I use the 17-gram servos that are recommended in the back for the elevator and rudder, and those are right under the pedal here. I could go down. I don't know if I need such a big servo for this type of plane. Like, I don't expect to be, you know, full throttling this thing, <laughs> you know, going nuts around the field. I expect this to fly nice and, uh, you know, nice and tame. There you go, guys. Just an idea of the uh, tire muff but overall i'm impressed with her i think she looks fantastic i definitely had some minor issues what well, i will say when you're assembling anything read the manual and then read it again and read it again as you do a step because i told myself that i built a few now and then i made a mistake uh that almost cost me um at the you know during the build process I got excited, I did the horizontal stabilizer, got that glued in, glued in the hinges, and I went right to the rudder and forgot to put the tail wheel on because that hooks into the rudder. So I had glued the hinges into the rudder without looking at the manual first and had to cut them out. A good comment from Gordon Fraser saying, fit a smaller tail wheel on there to fix the weight to move forward instead of adding to the nose. But we can't really do that. We, we gotta do keep that. In stock. Or do, yeah. remember what, um, what Pat Hartness did with that big Vulcan All the iron thing? Tires. He made like he made tires out of weights yeah. um, for that big popsicle Valkyrie. stick Valkyrie yeah. that uh, that is at Joe Nall. And I remember they were ready to maiden it that year, and they couldn't find the CG. And then Pat Hartness was like, "Hold on!" And he grabbed like two big iron lead weights, drilled holes through it, came back in about you know 10, 15 minutes at their machine shop, put those on, and balanced the plane. Uh, with the tires, which is big, which is big, heavy weighted <laughs> tires, you know, wouldn't do that. But I think I may, I think I may swap the servos now that I, I look at it, but I want to see what happens when I get that other ESC, cause I'm going to mount that more closer to the motor mount, see how much weight I can get there. I like the idea of the, uh, prop nut. Maybe I get some heavier nuts and just, I could probably fit a bunch on the end yeah, of the, on like the prop. The to Google it. <laughs> <laughs> Google it. Fair enough. Fair enough. Bigger batteries will ever be a good idea. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I think the biggest one I have is 6,000 4S I could go to. But a 5,000 is a pretty, pretty big honking 4S pack, as is. But either way, again, I love the looks of her. So, and I'm excited how, fa how quickly it went together. It's the fastest I ever put together a, uh, a Balsa ARF. Um, not that she's too big, but it's a 1,400 millimeter wingspan. I mean, she's a significant looking... Looking bird, it'll be my first biplane. So as soon as my new transmitter comes um, and I make sure that I don't get any more range test signal issues, then I will 100% be uh, taking this one out. And speaking of, uh, I guess the next one on the list, uh, there we go, is going to be the Flightline OV-10, guys. You guys know, you guys all got your shipping notifications. They arrived this week. So uh, like I said, yesterday we met up with Patrick Crowisdale. 
He brought out his Corsair for next week uh, after we do the finalists and the crash contest. It'll be Learn to Land Part 3. Uh, and I went out there, I was hoping to tandem these, but that's when I, I noticed uh, signal issues I was having on that OV-10. So I, I bailed, but uh, I let Patrick Maiden and then fly this. So he did two flights on it, and that video is going to be coming out. Um, but I wanted to show one of our own, our CS guy, Andrew O'Bannon, if you guys ever see him on Facebook or whatnot. He had a cool little video of his OV-10. He was uh, the first customer service guy to get one and, you know, help us out. He'll be answering any questions people have in customer service of it. But he mounted a camera up on the elevator on the horizontal stabilizer, which I thought was such a cool angle. I wish we would have thought of that. I didn't even think about this when we did our product video. But uh, the footage looks really cool from it. And uh, as you'll see, sometime next week, we're going to release the video of Patrick flying around the OV-10 from his maiden um, to you know, from his maiden to, um, what's it called, his second flight, he absolutely adored it. And that was the first time he ever experienced it. And, uh, you know, he doesn't work for us or anything, so we don't tell him what to say. But he really loved it and thinks it's an awesome trainer, trainer style aircraft. Is that a stick that just popped up on the, <laughs> on the, on the aircraft? Yeah, you see that? Yeah, 100% a stick on there right now. Oh, okay. It's going to pop. There it is. <laughs> where did, I don't know where that came from. But, oh, I forgot we should have cut this one down a little bit. Oh, does he taxi? Let's see how long he takes off. Let's get to the takeoff. But let me see. So, um... There's some questions in there. RC Air Marshal. Yeah, well, what I said, I figured it out, RC Air Marshal. I used a bunch of different receivers of different brands and everything. It turns out my transmitter um, ha is the issue. So I'm getting range test issues on every model I have now. So something's gone bad in my transmitter. So I have a new one on the way. So it wasn't the plane. It wasn't the receiver. We determined that, you know, I guess my transmitter after taking it around, taking it out so many times, probably dust, dirt, usage, it's it's definitely been used and abused. So it was time for a new one anyway. But check out how awesome this looks. He slowed down his flaps. I just love the view and he's out in California and he gets some nice, it looks like a windy day when he did it. But overall it was sweet. Uh, what else do we have? It's too bad you can't buy spare props for the new OB-10. Paul, they are the same props as the Flightline B-24. So um, they should be there unless they are out of stock. Because, again, when people buy new aircrafts, they eat up spare parts, too, right away. So, you know, like, people prepare for that. So, you know, um, if they're not in stock, I, I obviously being live here, I saw somebody ask, is this live? What is this, live? Yes, Gillies, BFK, BKF, we are live. You missed that part, Gillies. Uh, Gillies, BKF, the contest was of the best crashes. We announced the finalists, as you see on the, re on the left side of your screen. We did that at the beginning of this video, so after this video ends, you can always go back and rewatch. But in about 10 minutes, the, uh, those finalists, that's going to come out on a separate video on YouTube that everybody's going to be able to vote. So, Paul, spare parts will become available for the new OV-10 if they're not already on the website. It's literally as they're unloading the container. When a new container comes in for a new aircraft that's been on pre-order, they send out all the planes straight off the container. They're trying to get them out as fast as possible. So they probably hadn't gotten to the spare parts yet. And then the spare parts, it just takes time for the warehouse to go through, sort them, find their new spot in the warehouse, and then send it over to our web guy who updates how many of each thing we have and then lets them know they are ready to be ordered. So they'll be coming ASAP. Um, you know, again, as soon as possible. Just bear with us, as you might, as you guys might know. Um, as you, yeah, hide that. As you guys might know, um, you know, with COVID and everything, we're we're doing our very best in the warehouse and everything. We have similar issues as other as other companies with getting people to work and things like that. So they've been busting their buns to keep everything going well, and uh, it's awesome. But uh, any other questions? So, oh, on the now in stock, I was going to say we have the, uh, that's our next segment there. So the now in stock portion of today was about the T-33. I saw somebody had posted there was a different T-33, right? It was FPV Compact. This, I believe, is Andrew O'Bannon, who is our CS guy. This is some of the guys at his club because he took a, he actually put FPV in his Bronco and he had a great shot that he posted on Facebook of two T-33s like peeling off away from his uh, OV-10. But these guys had released this video. I don't think Andrew's in the video. Something's happening to, Something's happening to that video. Yeah, Let's see if we... Right now. Oh, we're not seeing it. 
Well, is there a picture? Wasn't there a picture yeah, of it? Yeah, two pictures and a video. I'll give you oh, okay. So we're having Buy technical. Him some time here. Buy him some time, so I'll just keep talking. But uh, it was really cool. They just posted a couple T33s, and I think they also put FPV on their T33s. So we just thought it was a good segue into, there it is. We just thought it was a good segue into, um, you know, check that out, the, the mount. And then I don't I don't think he ever puts the, the top on when you're flying. I wouldn't put the, the plastic on top if I was going to FPV a jet. But the T-33 is probably a great stable platform to do it on, uh, being that it can land, you know, very, you can almost land flat uh, as opposed to necessarily landing high alpha. That's always been my fear with FPVing from a jet is that, is that uh you know that high alpha trying to touch down your mains you get, you don't really get the sense of just how high off the ground you are uh from your landing gear yeah. when you're flying fpv here's the video but they don't actually show any on board oh. <laughs> it's just it was just them so like maybe one or two passes yeah. i think this might be andrew filming the two of them just doing a, a flight of their t33s yeah. but it's on it's on uh facebook they shared it and uh again Guys, the USAF T33, popular seller, back in stock now. So whether you want the newest jet that Freewing released or, you know, the newest Flightline Bird, which I love. I'm so mad that we didn't get to do our tandem. But once I sort out my transmitter issues, we'll get out there and tandem these uh, these OV-10s again with Patrick. And I can't wait to see. I'm hoping next week's show, I'm assuming, is going to have some main videos of the OV-10 out there and uh, people's thoughts on it. Because I think you guys are really going to be impressed with the characteristics of the OV-10. Guys who just want a nice, man, it's, it's not hard to fly at all. Just get it set up right. And then the only thing I could say about it is, uh, you know, I'm still learning to use the rudder highly effectively. Like Patrick, in the video, in the video, he, Patrick fly yeah, he like left this. it at 100%. He was doing straight rudder turns, like just with his left hand, you know, flying it like a three channel aircraft. And to me, when I hit the rudder, like I just, you know, I get all crazy. Cause if you leave the, the authority on these, on the twin rudders on this plane, um, you know, and you're not used to rudder, it, it moves the plane around. So I had, I think I had put my rates down like 50% throws on the rudder and a lot of extra expo just so it doesn't affect me as much um you know and then i'll move it back but dave yep t33 you said it jet jam i heard a lot of t33s were there um yeah, i'm assuming if you're gonna have an edf jet jam free wing's gonna be involved one way or the other so i remember being there and we can't i'm gonna try 100 percent. obviously we can't promise anything anymore in this world um about getting out to jet jam next year but that's the plan we're still planning on we're hoping for early october is null in the fall we plan on going to that and then mary boozers um i will call out him so mary boozers in the comments you could tell us he's having his own fly-in at the same place in lakeland florida i believe i think they're called the ccrc2 um, yeah, which is crazy. Whoa. But uh, they hold Florida E-Jet there uh, in February, and he's doing it at that same location. So I was actually thinking in my head that Florida E-Jet show was one that I wanted to try to get to this year. But, um, you know, if I can't, that's going to be November 21st, I believe, uh, Wes saying, the weekend of November 21st. Perfect time to be in Florida. Perfect time to be in Florida, yeah. yes. So we are going to try, you know. We're not, we can't promise anything with the way the world we got goes, Don but Adams just showed up. as of he right now, we will go. Thirty-five C is already under construction. Don, awesome. And do you know what you did wrong, or did you do anything wrong? Was it we didn't see what the crash, how the crash exactly happened in the video? Was it just dumb thumbing, or you know, was it something? Was it something you you now know that you're gonna have blue to box. fix? <laughs> Don't, no, <laughs> it's never the blue box. That's crazy. That's crazy. Well, guys, it is 12.55, so I just want to set a reminder. In five minutes, the video, the crash finalist video, will go live as its own video. Um, it's, it's already scheduled to go. It's going to go live, and you guys go in there. The same 30 finalists that you just saw earlier in this video, will, uh, you'll see all those play out uh, on their own. And uh, just get in there and leave a comment of what number was the winner. And uh, I know Victor Shamulus is going to have like 40... Uh, fake accounts. <laughs> He's gonna pick his, only his vote own. For one each, so be <laughs> but you can only, you know, try only to vote once. Don't leave a hundred comments with a hundred different numbers, you know. And we're gonna obviously pour through it. I'm gonna try to delete all the comments that don't have numbers in them. So you know, we're gonna be uh, obviously monitoring that that uh, comment section. And then next Friday, I'll 
take the comments off that video as soon as so nobody submits new comments. And I'll probably just take that finalist video down. I don't think it needs to live because, as I said, Alex is going to take every single crash that was submitted and make a fun crash compilation video. Those videos always, you know, it's always who doesn't sit there sometimes and just watch fun crash compilation videos. So there you go. Weekend of November 21st, MBRC Toys MBRC. for Tots fly-in. Saturday and Sunday event camping is allowed. So Wesley Miller. Uh, RC Air Marshall, the problem with Seth for us is, is that it's always the weekend before Jonal. And if I'm doing two weekends at Jonal, I, I'm not taking three weekends away from my family. You know, I, I like Seth. I've been there a long time ago, back in 2014. It's awesome, but it's no comparison to Jonal when it's a week later why you know it's 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 too much i can't do a whole three weeks three straight weekends away from uh long, young kids i don't like missing that kind of time it's quality time that can't be missed it's hard enough to be at joan all sometimes for nine straight days uh you know when you want your family there so that's tough but we got one account so we have three minutes guys so i say jump to the in closing portion uh, any other questions about anything you guys saw? Next week's video is 100%. We're going to start out the video giving away an Air Titan to our grand prize winner that you guys are about to vote on. We're going to be giving away a Mercury to the runner-up of our choice and a $50 gift card to the random draw from everyone who submitted. Then we have a portion, again, Learn to Land. Patrick takes you through um, different characteristics and some do's and don'ts of landing a Warbird. He does it with a Flightline Corsair. And uh, before, you know, for some reason, I wasn't getting signal issues on my Spitfire. So we did get a tandem flight in before I did get signal issues later at the table, which is scary enough as it is. So, um, you know, as I said, that darn transmitter stuff is tough. But um, that will be, uh, yeah, that will be uh, next week's show. And then who knows what else is coming because a lot of, a lot. A lot is coming. Uh, we are getting, you know, nitty gritty. A lot of stuff is going to be hitting motionrc.com. But as always, guys, we thank you so much for joining us on this Friday. We have two minutes, so uh, just wait for that video to go live. But you have a week to vote, so, uh, you know, share it out. Have fun with it. And, um, you know, if you didn't make it into the finals, not your fault. It's just it was tough to narrow people down. And again, guys, as always, thank you all so much for uh, joining us each and every Friday. This is the 23rd straight episode that we've done this year, and uh, we can't wait. It's been growing like leaps and bounds, and we're excited, and hope you, hopefully you learned something today. We always try to have some fun, try to make a teachable show and make it like an official show, if you will, and uh, we can't thank you enough for liking, for subscribing. So if you're on your way out the door, press that like button, which is down here somewhere, over there. Press the like. Uh, oh, he faded away. I wasn't done yet. <laughs> so we'll do it. We'll do it, guys. That'll do it for me. And again, thank you to Alex. Thank you to everybody for joining. And now we are done with this week's Friday live show.